Hey guys, how's it going? This is Watch, and in this video, we'll be doing a direct comparison between the Canon 7D Mark II and the 5D Mark III. Here we have the very famous Canon 5D Mark III, which is excellent for both photos and videos, and the 7D Mark II, which is a fantastic APS-C size sensor camera. So what we're going to do is take a look at the photos and video capabilities of both cameras and see which one turns out to be the best. Now, physically speaking, both cameras are very similar. They're both made out of magnesium alloy. They're both weather sealed, so they're dust and water resistant. And in terms of dimensions and footprint in the hand, they definitely feel very similar. Furthermore, in terms of weight, the 7D Mark II measures about 820 grams versus 860 grams on the 5D. Now, interestingly, in terms of durability, as we mentioned before, they're both really durable, but the 7D Mark II is actually rated for a higher overall shutter count of 200,000 versus about 150,000 on the 5D. Mark III. Now, if you ever used a mid-range to higher-end Canon DSLR, you kind of know exactly where things are on both cameras. They're pretty much using the exact same button configuration and layout. Although we have a new addition to the 7D Mark II, which is the new autofocus selection mode dial switch, which essentially will allow you to toggle between a different autofocusing selection modes, which is a really nice convenient button that's dedicated towards that before you had to use the M function button at the top of the camera, which is now available for you to customize a specific command onto. Now the primary difference between these two cameras definitely has to be the imaging sensors inside. We have a standard APS-C size sensor on the 7D Mark II which has a resolution of 20.2 megapixels and on the 5D we have the full frame 35 millimeter sensor that has a resolution of 22.3 megapixels. Now most of you already know the different advantages of a full frame DSLR camera compared to a crop sensor camera but mainly speaking in terms of image quality you typically find a better low light performance on full frame cameras compared to crop sensors but we're going to go ahead and test that out later on in the video. Now although the 5D Mark III may have a couple of advantages in terms of sensor size we do find that every other aspect about taking pictures and shooting video is more feature rich on the 7D Mark II. If we talk about the autofocusing system we can notice that we do have a lot more autofocusing points of 65 points which are all cross type compared to 61 points on the 5D Mark II and only about 41 are cross type. Additionally, the autofocusing system has been a revamp from the 5D Mark III, so it's a little bit faster and more accurate than what we saw in the 5D. The other really big thing about the 7D Mark II is that it's using that dual pixel technology that was introduced in the 70D last year, which is a hybrid autofocusing system that uses phase detection autofocusing in live view. So that means not only can you get really fast autofocusing speeds in a live live view when you're shooting stills, but in terms of video, this is a huge asset. That's probably one of the best autofocusing systems for a large sensor video camera. The big party trick that the 7D Mark II has compared to the 5D is now we have 10 frames per second maximum burst mode, which is almost a double of what the Mark III can do at six frames per second, which really means that this sub $2,000 camera is competing against one of the top level DSLRs you can get from Canon, the 1DX, which can also do 10 frames per second. And if you couple that capability with the new autofocus system on the 7D. This is probably one of the best sports nature photographer cameras you're going to get out there. And if you can see from my example over here, the results are fairly impressive. Now we're just going to take a brief moment to actually compare the silent shooting modes on these two cameras to see which one has the quieter shutter sound. Now, one of the really great things about both cameras is that both viewfinders have a hundred percent coverage. So they're very accurate in giving you the best representation of what your final image is going to look like through the viewfinder. Now, looking at the LCD displays on the back of these cameras, you do notice that we have a larger display about 3.2 inches on the Mark III and about three inch display on the 7D, but they both have the same exact resolution. So in terms of PBI count and overall screen clarity, the new 7D is just a bit clearer than the 5D, but unfortunately, it is not a touchscreen display which is kind of unfortunate because we did see touchscreen displays in most of their lower level DSLRs and uh, this would have been a nice addition to have that especially for accessing uh, different menu features and the other thing that would have been nice to have would be a articulating screen but I can definitely understand why Canon won't put that into the 70 because that's really designed to be a very rugged and durable camera a lot of nature photographers use them and having an articulating screen could compromise some aspects of durability and the overall ruggedness of the camera. 
And just in terms of some of the unique features the 7D has that the Mark III doesn't have is that it has built-in GPS as well as a USB 3.0, which is one of the first Canon cameras to have uh, that interfacing so it can transfer your data back and forth quite fast. We also do have an intervalometer built in. So if you do a lot of time-lapse photography or even some hyperlapse stuff, that's an excellent feature to have. Now let's finally take a look at these steels capabilities between these two cameras. We're actually using the exact same exposure settings we're shooting on raw in terms of the low light stuff we're shooting at jpeg just to show you the processing difference between the two and we are using the exact same lenses although you're never going to get the exact framing right because there are different sensors but i did my best to keep the frame lines as consistent as possible so let's go ahead and take a look at these stills and see which one comes on top in terms of stills capabilities In terms of sharpness and clarity, I think they're both kind of on par with each other. I do find that the 5D at times is just a hit more sharper and certainly has a cleaner overall image, although the 7D is a huge improvement compared to most of Canon's crop sensor DSLR cameras. In terms of dynamic range and latitude, I think both the cameras are pretty much on par with each other when you're using 14-bit RAW files. You have so much flexibility in getting details out of the shadows and recovering highlights and things like that, so they're pretty much in par in terms of overall landscape photography and things like that. In terms of low light, however, we again find a difference between the cameras. Certainly speaking, the 5D is cleaner. You can pretty much use the 5D up to like 6400 ISO with no problems. And I think the 7D Mark II definitely does a good job in terms of 6400 ISO and 3200 ISO, but uh, 12800 is a little bit more harder to use and uh, it's certainly a lot more usable on the 5D. So anything over over that uh, you're kind of getting into a little bit more of a noisy territory but I think the 5D is a fantastic low light camera and certainly more of a versatile camera when it comes to low light performance. Now we live in a world that where a lot of people are using DSLR cameras primarily for video so this is a huge factor in a which camera is kind of the better overall. Now in terms of options we have a whole bunch of different options in terms of video capturing formats. We can either choose to record an MP4 or .mov on the 7D versus we only can record on MOV. So it depends on what kind of editing platform you use, but you have a more versatile options. Now the big feature on the new 7D is that it, it can actually record 1080p at 60 frames per second versus you have to bump down the resolution to 720p on the 5D if you want to record any kind of slow motion on the 5D. But uh, in terms of overall kind of bitrate and things like that, you apart from the 1080p 60 FPS, there's not a whole lot of difference. You can record intra frame in both cameras, so they're both really good in terms of editing platform and rendering out really clear and smooth motion. Additionally, we do also have manual audio level controls with a microphone input as well as a headphone jack on both cameras, which is really essential for all you videographers out there, as well as uncompressed HDMI that can output 8 bit at 422. So if you have an external recorder, you could probably get a little bit better in terms of color and clarity if you have an external recorder. But we're going to actually record our video internally and now we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the video footage that I shot throughout the week and see which camera comes on top in terms of video.
the big difference in terms of video will definitely be the low light capabilities because basically when taking a look at this scene over here we can definitely see that the 7D definitely does a excellent job in terms of rendering out the overall image at high ISO between 1600 to 6400 I think the camera does an excellent job anything higher than that we start getting into a lot of noise issues and we're not using any noise reduction software both in camera or using any kind of post noise reduction software so definitely not bad but when we take a look at the 5d mark 3 capability of low light we definitely notice a difference in terms of how clean that overall image is in fact you can probably in some shots get away with even 12,800 ISO so it's definitely a very promising low light camera as we saw previously from the stills capabilities of the 5d mark 3 now just to conclude some of my thoughts on the 7d mark 2 versus the 5d I think both cameras offer the pretty much the exact same performance when it comes to overall image quality differences the uh, stills capability on the 5d is a little bit more superior in terms of overall image quality but I think the autofocusing system and the metering system and, and the whole aspect of all the different options you get on the 7d is more feature rich and uh, definitely more advanced in a lot of different ways the other cool thing in terms of videos I think the 7d has the edge up in terms of image quality just by a slight margin but low light wise the 5d still is the winner there but overall in terms of the, the whole space of Canon cameras I think these are obviously the best overall cameras if you're whether you're a hobbyist or getting into professional level photography or videography these are uh, two great options but on that guys that's really it if you have any specific questions about anything I talk about in this video please make sure to leave that on a comment down below let me know if you guys were to actually get a camera for videos and photos which one would you pick or do you already have the Canon uh, 5D or perhaps even a 7D and want to upgrade uh, to a Mark II? Would you want to go for the full on 5D Mark III or go for the 7D? Because I think honestly, in terms of video functionalities, the 7D Mark II definitely has a couple of different features that I would definitely like. Unfortunately, there's no flip out screen, so you might be interested in the 70D. And if you're interested in a direct comparison between the 70D and the 7D, I have that video on our channel. So definitely check back to that but definitely love to hear all of your thoughts about the comparison so definitely leave all those things in a comment down below give us a thumbs up if you like the video and we'll see you later take care